If you've ever wondered why your arms swing as they do while you're running, perhaps you've got this really neat back and forth style or perhaps a slightly less conventional style, let's talk about what might be going on there, what you can do to work on your arms and what they should really be doing as part of your running technique anyway. Okay, let's get straight into this. So we need to consider the fact that our arms aren't just acting on their own as they're running. It's not just a different part of the system. The whole system is integrated together. And in fact, if we think about our walking gait, let alone our running gait, as we're walking, naturally, we fall into this pattern where as we're left foot forward or right foot forward as I am here, we're going to be left arm forwards and vice versa, right left. We've got this opposites pattern going on. And it's not just our arms swinging back and forth as we walk. It's in fact our pelvis and our torso rotating and counter-rotating. So as I'm walking now towards you, what we'll see if I stop here is that with my, le my left foot forwards, my pelvis is slightly turned to the right. And naturally with my right arm forwards, my shoulders are naturally slightly turned to the left. So I've got rotation that way and rotation that way. Now, as I obviously change onto the other side, that rotation and counter rotation works back and forth, back and forth. Now, with the hips rotating as I'm walking and as I'm running, we don't want to see quite as much rotation going on through the torso. Otherwise, we'd see really quite a lot of side to side rotation as we run. It would be very hard to control and it would be very inefficient. In fact, you can try that for yourself. Next time you're out running, try as you're running along to either just put your hands behind your back and keep running or hands across your chest or hands in front of you and keep running. And all of a sudden you'll feel there's a real sway side to side because the arm action that you employ while you're running, a big part of that is a dampener to actually control and counter the movement of the torso, the rotation of the torso. So the arms are there to dampen the rotational movement of the upper body. And in fact, whatever we see from a rotational point of view of the upper body and combined movement from around the hips and pelvis will affect how the arms swing back and forth. So let's try a little experiment for a second. If you stand on one leg for me, on this position, in this position, bring the knee forwards, bring opposite arm forwards, and I want you just to get into this kind of standing running man type action. Back and forth, back and forth. Just focus on dead straight lines as you're swinging your legs and arms back and forth. It's a weird drill, feels a bit silly, but just go with it. We're gonna get into a rhythm. From here, don't try and change the arms, but as you come forward with the knee, drift it across the midline. And you'll feel that as you drift the knee across the midline, all of a sudden you'll feel that the torso starts to counter that. Otherwise you'd fall over that way. So as your knee drifts across the midline, naturally your arms are going to drift across the midline at the same time. And we can drive that from top down as well. Again, same start position, back and forth, back and forth. I know you know what's coming now, but try not to influence this. As you then go hands across the midline, you can feel how you balance that out by throwing the knee forwards across the midline as well as you're swinging the legs. So top and bottom work together. Now, if you have a tendency to, if you're running, land on let's say the right side, and you have a tendency for the knee to drift in towards the midline, or you have a tendency to show this typical kind of hip drop position here, or a number of different imbalances and movement dysfunctions, sort of lack of control for want of a better word, around the hips and pelvis, this important midsection, what happens is that as part of our dampening movement with the upper body, we try and balance that out. So naturally, if we've got a runner, and Prisca Jeptu is a great example of this, as her knee drifts in towards the midline here, bearing in mind, by the way, she's an Olympic medalist um, marathon runner, she's an elite marathon runner, biomechanically, there's a lot going on, let's say, but as her knee drifts in towards the midline, we see the upper body starts to balance that out by overly rotating the top half and drifting the arms across the midline. So side to side to side to side, we get this almost uh, kind of whirlwind type running style with our upper body. In her example, would I actively as a coach, I mean, I know nothing about her, but in terms of her as an individual, but theoretically speaking, would I say, okay, one thing we can do is straighten your arms out and get you thinking about running back and forth and it'd be more efficient. Absolutely not. In fact, the drifting across of the arms that we see is a big part of the compensation strategy that allows her to get away with all this drift inwards of the knee and the sideways kind of 
lateral tilt of the pelvis, the typical hip drop sign that we see. There's a lack of control around hips and pelvis. A lot of movement going on around here. It needs to be countered by the movement going on around here. So I wouldn't ask her to do something different with her arms. Instead, I would take that as a cue, whether we're talking in this instance or whether we're talking any runner, yourself, myself, we, whatever we see with the arms, if we see an asymmetry going on or something that doesn't look like we would ideally see from a runner in terms of keeping a nice smooth back and forth action with the arms, use that as a cue or a clue to say, right, there must be something else going on. What can we strengthen around the hips and pelvis? What can we stabilize around the hips and pelvis to create better movement around here and therefore better control? So we need to compensate less through the upper body. Okay, so whatever you're doing with your upper body at the moment, if you're running here, arms going side to side, if you're one arm abducted, because perhaps that's your compensation strategy for the fact that you've got a right-sided hip drop, that's certainly something I see when I analyze my own running. If you didn't see that video, I'll leave a link down in the description. But this could be just a simple way that you're overcoming lack of control around same side hip. Again, the rationale for that is in the video down in the description. But whatever you're doing, don't just try and force a change. Don't ask yourself how you can consciously change your upper body. Ask yourself what you need to strengthen for your upper body naturally to start becoming a little bit less, a little bit more controlled, a little bit less required as a balancing act. Okay, hope that helps. Do let me know if you've got any questions around particularly your running style. And of course, if you're interested in more videos, particularly to do with the upper body as you're running, check out this video as there's a great tip there which will help you become more efficient with your arm action as you run. So check that out.